Hi, I'm Dr. John Kessler, and I've been asked to speak a little about hematology and try to answer some questions that we get with some regularity uh, over the past several decades that I've done this. Um, the first question is, you might ask, what is a hematologist? Hematologists are doctors who have an interest in blood diseases or blood conditions. They're not always diseases and how to manage them, diagnose them, and how to treat them. That involves going to medical school, three years of internal medicine, and then generally three years of hematology and medical oncology. It's rare for someone to be only a hematologist. Uh, most of us combine it with oncology because there is considerable overlap in that there are malignant blood diseases and uh, malignancies are handled by oncologists as well. You might ask, what conditions do hematologists treat? We treat blood diseases and you have to ask then what is in blood? There are red blood cells in blood, white blood cells of several different kinds. There are platelets that initiate the clotting process. There are proteins that fight infection, antibodies, you know them as. There are clotting factors that help us stop bleeding whenever we injure ourselves. Um, so, and there are cytokines, things that go to where we have infections or inflammation or wherever we need them, and they're carried there through the bloodstream. Each of those can have abnormalities. The blood cells can be too few, like uh, when the red cells are low, that's anemia. When there are too many, that's known as polycythemia. They have different uh, presentations. Same thing with white cells. Elevated white cells can be leukemias of various types. Myeloid, if it involves neutrophils, lymphoid, if it's lymphocytes, monocytic, if it involves monocytes. And you can have too many platelets. It's called thrombocythemia, or they can be too few. That's called thrombocytopenia uh, that have different conditions. Uh, and then the other blood diseases can involve antibodies, conditions like multiple myeloma, which is a disease of bone marrow cells that make antibodies. And of course, clotting uh, abnormalities can occur. If you clot too rapidly or too much, that's known as thrombophilia. You might present with blood clots in the lungs or legs, or it may be that you don't clot at all, like in hemophilia, where bleeding is a big problem after injury. And the other question I get is, why, did, why would my PCP refer me to you? Well, many of the conditions that I see, a PCP can handle. Iron deficiency anemia is certainly within their purview. Uh, and much of the time, those are taken care of before uh, I'm ever involved. And many times I'm not involved at all. Uh, it just depends on your PCP's level of confidence and comfort in dealing with the blood diseases. But for the most part, they like for us to handle them because we're up on the latest thing. Uh, I can't imagine what the PCPs go through. They have such a breadth of knowledge but they have to know a little bit about everything. It's very comforting for guys like me to be able to narrow down our focus so that we can go in much more depth and have a better understanding of fewer diseases. But we do get very good at it because that's all we do. Um, I'm often asked, what should I expect on my first visit with the hematologist? That's a great question. Generally, it's like most doctor visits. You'll come in, check in, they'll do your blood pressure and vitals, etc. cetera. Uh, you'll be placed in a room. The doc will come in and interview you about what kind of symptoms you've been having, uh, what kind of uh, things have turned up in the workup so far, what other diseases you have, because all of those things impact what we recommend. And before I ever even come in the room to interview you, I have already reviewed your records and know much about you. Uh, so during that interview, I get a better understanding of your understanding of what's going on. It gives me a place to start. So uh, generally we'll see you, examine you, and then refer you for some, some blood tests. Um, you can best prepare for that visit by having a good list of your medications, of knowing what conditions and diseases you've been treated for, what surgeries you might have had, 
And it's a good idea to bring along a second set of eyes and ears to help you remember these very important things because no one exists in a vacuum. All these diseases interact and our decisions impact are impacted by other comorbidities or conditions that you may have. Um, but beyond that, just bringing the information you have, we generally will get much information from your PCP before we see you. So we have a good idea of what they're asking for, where you've been, how long you've had it. All of these things are important in decision-making and diagnosis. Um, I'm asked often, what kind of tests do hematologists do? We do, we do blood tests. I mean, it's basically the blood and much of what we learn we can do with a simple blood test done right in the office. Um, first of all, the blood smear or CBC, we measure the red blood count, the white blood count, a differential which looks at the different kinds of white cells, the platelet count, whether the red cells are normal size, whether there's variation in size, all of that's available on the CBC that we get. And we supplement that by personally looking at the blood smear under the microscope. I have two blood smears here. Here's one uh, waiting for me to look at it under the microscope. It's been stained and we can find subtleties that the machines that look at these really can't find. And it gives us great clues to understand what's going on. And I've been looking at blood smears now for 40 years, and I'm very comfortable with that. Um, we also do uh, sometimes bone marrows. Most of the time, that's not necessary. But if there's a problem with blood production, oftentimes you have to go to the factory where blood is made and find out what the problem is. So a bone marrow test gives us that information. And since we go to the trouble of getting the blood, we check for certain genetic abnormalities um, and other characteristics to help us categorize conditions better and come up with a personalized form of treatment. Not all leukemias are treated the same. Each patient's a little bit different and it's important for us to recognize those differences and deal with them. And we've gotten very good at it. Uh, another test we do is a blood test called flow cytometry. And that's where we're able to find small populations of cells that are all alike. It's abnormal in nature to have a group of cells that are identical. So when we find a group of say lymphocytes, those are white blood cells that all type the same. We know they all came from the same parent and that's called a clone. And when you see a clonal group of lymphocytes, that is a form of leukemia. It may be acute, it may be chronic, it may not even need to be treated, but it is important that we diagnose it and those tests help us do that. They obviously take a little bit of time, so often on your first visit, we're not gonna be able to give you the answer right away. Sometimes we do, but uh, within a week or so, we generally have the information that we need to tell you what's going on and then we can set up a plan together um, as to how we can attack that and how we can get the most benefit for you, the patient, uh, over time. It may be with some of these visits, it's a one-time event and we're done. Uh, other patients, it may be an ongoing relationship between us and we wanna make sure that uh, everybody's comfortable with that um, and personalities mesh, which generally they do, but uh, it is important that the patient's comfortable with their physician as well. I'm often asked, well, what questions should I ask? Well, anything that's on your mind should be asked. It, it, there's no stupid question. I've heard some things that I thought were a little uh, on the fringes, but you know, they're always provocative and they make me think. Uh, and so I think if it gives you more information, that is a good thing. So come prepared with questions. It's a good idea to write them down, have them ready to go. And uh, so that you get the most out of your visit. If there's any other information that's required, we're reachable by text. I do publish my cell phone on my business cards. Not all of us do that, but many do. And also we're, reach we're reachable by email and through a, um, a referral uh, nurse or a reference nurse on site who can often answer your questions. I hope that helps.